Now, we've actually developed a very, very important piece of technology to help with this process of coming up with ideas and framing ideas for application development. Um, we call it the cocktail napkin. Now, this is very important because by carrying this around on your person, we can actually easily enable uh, ideas to flow. Um, so and if you take that cocktail napkin, it, the fact is, it, it works. You can simply put um, your ideas on the napkin and carry them around. And we actually brought napkins for you today to use from there on. Uh, so, John, you no longer have to use sheep. And uh, <laughs> other people uh, who, who use snowmen, again, terrible technologies. We've actually come up with a much better option here. So what you do here is you get your cocktail napkin and you put your ideas and you structure out a system on it as you want to build it, and you send that to TreeFrog. And what we do is we take that, those, that, those ideas, those napkins, and we turn them into sexy things, graphic designs. And we take those graphic designs and we turn them into XHTML puppets for you. By doing that, we, by taking that puppet, we actually give you back a, a Photoshop design that is actually perfectly layered so you can use all the pieces from it, as well as CSS and XHTML. No, we're not doing HTML5 yet, much to Chris's discontent. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but for all intents and purposes, what we can help is if you have a GUI and you, and you want to make a client very proud of what comes out at the end, we can start, we work with your ideas, we come up with graphics, we do anything from forms to systems, something we built for GE to manage. Uh, all of the different appliances all over the shop, all built in Lasso, I will note. Um, uh, a system which, uh, which all the libraries in Canada go to purchase their books from, uh, so it's a large, basically, we make it look pretty. Forms, uh, server software, um, uh, file management for Harley Davidson, um, craft user interfaces for just basic simple stuff to more complex article management stuff. Etc. You guys get the general idea. If you are interested in that kind of service and so we can help you with that, talk to the wonderful ladies at the back. Ah, so, the big reason why I'm standing here, this is what I really came here for and what I'm really excited to talk about. I think everyone in this room is aware that uh, computing power is doubling still every two years. And what that means is uh, that uh, Computers are getting faster and faster and faster. The laptops that are on this, these desks are better than the laptops that were here last year. And we all know that as a result, those computers are speeding up faster and faster and faster. And at one point in the very near future, and this was predicted a long time ago and we have, we've been going with it, computers will be as fast as a human brain in a few decades. And though the laptop that's sitting here on the desk will actually be as fast as the human race in our lifetimes. So that's very important to realize because if you take that idea and you then realize as well that people have been working with mice to map their brain, uh, we're, we're already going into human experimentation where we're going to map the entire human brain. And what that means is we eventually are going to take that brain and move it to the interwebs. Now, I refer this moving of the human brain to the interwebs as, of course, what everyone knows to be as the singularity. I mean, there's been science, clear science. We're all, we're, we're all aware of that, right? And of course, in the future, these clear signs are going to bring us to the point where the singularity, every atom of the universe, is used for one giant computer to manage as many humans as, as possible and get us out of this horrible meat space and into the interwebs. Now, this is where I've really come to realize it's important to have a solid something behind you because if you're going to upload your brain to the web, you want to make sure that something evil doesn't happen to you while you're on the web. Um, of course, this is not true because I'm running a Mac and Macs don't crash. <laughs> However, the question being, if I move that head to the web, is there really a safe operating system out there that I would want to have my brain uploaded to? Now this is where I have realized the religious experience that we are all going to move, I call it, the leecher to Lasso 9. So, let me talk about Leap for a second. What is Leap? 
So Leap's been around for a little while. Now, what, one of the things John is going to talk about tomorrow is the difference between a CMS and a framework and a website operating system. Um, I'm going to leave this to you, John, but basically a content management system is for users to come in and edit the data. A framework is something for developers to develop with, and a website operating system is really a, a, a complex framework-y thing. John, you can take it from there. But I want you to understand basically that, uh, what, what Leap is and where it came from. So I, when I picked up that first copy of Lasso, I sat down to program stuff myself. Obviously didn't know anything about programming. I remember reading through you on Solvay's uh, upload scripts, which basically taught me how to program at that point. Um, and what happened is, out of that, just with a lot of ideas and a lot of graphics and making things look pretty, we came up with a system called Ocularis, which ran off of FileMaker. I was constantly running down to the data center and rebooting machines. Um, and it, it ran hundreds of websites. We had a lot of fun with it. And we actually rebuilt it when Lasso 5 came out um, yeah, as Proteus, uh, which branched off into another thing called community web systems, and we tied all of that back together into something called Leap, which was a content management system, allowed users with very little web knowledge to get on and edit the content of their website. And it was a lasso-based CMS. And we've since obviously upgraded and maneuvered past into Leap 3, which exists today and runs many websites. So I am formally announcing here at this conference that we will be coming up with Leap 5. As per Lasso, we are skipping the four for some reason. Um, uh, and that will be coming to you on January the 1st. So a little bit of history again on what, what Lab Leap 3 is. It's actually a fairly, it's, it's a remarkably easy to use system where I can get in and it's extraordinarily extensible in that I can manage all my pages and groups and workflow, etc. through Leap 3. So today, it's very easy for users. Obviously, it came out of a design agency, so it's very, very useful for designers. And it's a fairly mature system. It runs hundreds of sites. It's got hundreds of plugins and modules for it. Um, we've got literally thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of users, obviously tens of thousands of pages. And one of our big focuses, not our primary focus, is search engine ranking with our system. That's what most of our clients are looking for, is better search engine ranking. And that's what we can, we can lay the claim to. Now, um, what does Leap do today? So Leap 3. We have built-in geo-targeting, so uh, we have built-in systems to manage that. Obviously, anyone can build that, but it comes as part of the system. We have a lot of really nifty ways of looking at URLs, girls and pearls, uh, personal URLs, and generally we have URLs to do variable print marketing. Uh, we do a lot of cloning and split testing through Leap, where we have the same data appear on multiple websites, which allows you to sell the same products through different brands. Um, we do a lot of trapping, which is trying to get people to give us information and then giving back to the, to the client of the website, you know, here's a list of people that look for what you're doing and gives, gives them better uh, general understanding of where they stand with their website. Obviously tagging, full tagging capacity with the tag clouds that get spit out of that. And content funneling, we talk about this stuff. This is all stuff that will be brought to Leap 5. One very important thing as well is there is another, if you do a search for Leap CMS, you will find this guy. This is not us. This is some guy in uh, Washington who last year decided that he didn't want to do a search for Leap CMS on the internet and call himself Leap. Uh, we haven't worked for that in Canada. Uh, it's moron. Um, <laughs> However, uh, if, any, if any of you incidentally lives in Washington and owns a baseball bat and is also looking for work, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or if anyone owns, owns a uh, shark bear octopus, <laughs> uh, we might uh, send that his way as well. But anyway, moving right along. Uh, what we did is we, uh, we trapped Jono somehow and dragged him up to Canada from New Zealand and put him in a room and we printed off the entire code of Leap 3 onto the wall, good old fashioned technology, so we could stand around as a group and mock my code. Um, which was heavily mocked. Uh, John actually found one place where there was a huge section in an if statement. Uh, what was it that said? Uh, it was, I don't remember. It was code that didn't function at all and had been there since Leap 1 uh, through just silliness on my part. Um, it, it was very secure, I will yeah. you, you were very proud of it. So I was. You, you yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, out of that, we took a bunch of people, we threw them all in a room, and we said, you need to rebuild this. You need to rebuild this on Lasso 9. 
Um, and uh, John, are you done yet? <laughs>